What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Once again, this is Saris here and I'm coming at you from the deck of the Skyfire. That's right. We are going to be looking at Warmaster Blackcorn in depth, abilities, strategy, what your role is, all that kind of great stuff. So let's take a closer look at the abilities starting right now. Warmaster Blackhorn is a two-phase encounter. He has 20.6 million health, spawns Twilight Elites, Twilight Drakes, and Twilight Sappers. For this fight, we use two tanks, three healers, and a balanced mix of five DPS. Twilight Barrage. The Twilight Drinks launch bursts of dark energy at random location on the deck of the Skyfire. Twilight Barrage deals very high shadow damage divided evenly among all players within its five yard radius and the Skyfire. If the attack strikes the deck of the Skyfire without hitting any player, the gunship itself will take the full damage. Twilight Onslaught. Goriona unleashes a massive blast of dark energy at a random location on the deck of the Skyfire. Twilight Onslaught deals a very, very high amount of shadow damage divided evenly among all players within its 10 yard radius and the Skyfire. If the attack strikes the deck of the Skyfire without hitting any player, once again, the gunship will suffer the full effect of the attack. The Alliance Engineers equipped the Skyfire with two repurposed harpoon guns seized during its prior service to Northrend. Harpoon gunners spear the enemy's assault drakes and reel them in to bring them within reach of ranged attackers on the deck. The drakes strain against the line, eventually breaking free and returning to the safe distance. After a pause to reload, the harpoon gunners then spear their target again anew. Twilight Elite Dreadblade. The Dreadblade carves a swath of destruction with its dark sword. The sword inflicts high shadow damage to enemies in a frontal cone and leaves a small shadow dot which ticks for one minute. This effect of course stacks. Twilight Elite Slayer. The Slayer strikes a vicious blow with its jagged sword. The strike inflicts medium physical damage and another small physical dot is left on the target for one minute. This effect stacks. And both of the Twilight Elites have Blade Rush. The Elite Slayer charges at the location of a random distant player inflicting very high physical damage to all players in its path. The Twilight Sapper. Sleek Infiltrator Drake's airdrop goblins strapped with powerful explosive onto the deck of the ship. These sappers will rush to the breach of the gunship bridge and detonate their destructive payload. Detonate. Upon reaching the Skyfire's bridge, the sapper detonates its explosives. The blast inflicts very high fire damage to players within 8 yards, damages the Skyfire for 20% of its total health, and kills the sapper. Phase 2. After defeating three waves of Dragon Riders, Warmaster Blackhorn will leap down onto the ship and this will begin the second phase. Goriona, Twilight Flames. Goriona launches a blast of dark energy at the location of a random player, inflicting medium shadow damage on impact to players within an 8 yard radius. Twilight Flames lingers on the deck of the Skyfire, inflicting medium shadow damage to players within 7 yards every 1 second for 30 seconds. Warmaster Blackhorn himself. Devastate. Blackhorn sunders his current target's armor, inflicting 120% weapon damage and reducing the player's armor by 20% for 30 seconds. This effect stacks. Disrupting Roar. Warmaster Blackhorn screams fiercely, inflicting high physical damage to all enemies on the gunship. This shall also interrupt spellcasting for players within 10 yards for 8 seconds. Shockwave. Blackhorn strikes the ground, unleashing a wave of force that inflicts high physical damage to enemies in an 80 yard frontal cone and stuns them for 8 seconds. Vengeance. As Warmaster Blackhorn takes damage during the course of the fight, he inflicts 1% more damage for each percentage of his missing health. In phase one, there are a lot of different things going on, a lot of things to be looking out for here. We've got our twilight barrages, our twilight onslaughts, we've got our sappers, our elites, and our drakes. Now all these things together, you now there's different roles, they're going to be doing different, thing, different things for each one. Um, so we're going to be looking at those in depth here. Um, basically, for the first phase, we're going to be, I'm going to be splitting um, the four different roles. We've got tanks, healers, melee DPS, and ranged DPS. Um, for the tanks, the first set of Twilight Elites will be dropped and they need to be picked up ASAP. Um, they need to be tanked near each other for the AoE damage and be careful not to hit others or each other with the uh, cleaves that the Elites do do. Uh, healers, your job is to soak up as many Twilight Barrages as possible, making sure to get into the Twilight Onslaught using cooldowns here if needed while keeping the raid alive, obviously. Uh, melee DPS. You'll be DPSing based on the priority of sappers, then twilight elites, while being sure to get into the twilight onslaughts and soaking up some twilight barrages where possible. Range DPS. You will have the priority of sappers, twilight drakes, and then twilight elites. 
you will need to get into as many barrages as possible and be present for all onslaughts. Basically, the barrages are going to need to be soaked up by two people comfortably in 10 man, which is what this guide is for. And any more than that is okay, obviously, but to have one person take it can hurt very bad. So what our raid did is we decided to split into quadrants. We made four corners. We had two people for each one and tried to make it to where, you know, each barrage would have two people in it um basically for the melee would try and soak up as much as they can we would tank the elite somewhere near the melee area um where their quadrant was so that way they could rush to as many of the the barrages as possible as to not leave you know somebody to take one by themselves um as far as for the onslaughts we have everyone except the tanks get in so that's eight people to split the damage with the sky fire using cooldowns um as you can a raid cooldown here or there a healing cooldown whatnot it's a couple of nice quick aoe's get everything back up to normal and you know then head back out as quickly as possible to your quadrant so that way you can continue soaking up the brushes um sappers are very important they take priority at all times uh it almost certainly will cause a wipe unless you you're extremely good at taking the barrages and the onslaughts you will most likely need to kill all the sappers or else you will be uh, in bad shape as they do take 20% of the ship's health with them uh, if they do manage to hit it so we've got the sappers are priority and barrages and onslaughts those are the big things you got to worry about make sure that the tanks are not tanking the elites to where they will be cleaving the rest of the raid and you do that three times you have three waves of the elites coming in sappers and the drakes are going to continue to be um, getting harpooned once you do that three times then you'll be moving on to phase two in phase two, a tank will need to pick up Warmaster Blackhorn and the ranged DPS will need to be focusing down Goriona as quickly as possible while avoiding the Twilight Flames that she puts on the ground and which do leave the trail of fire where they were. So you gotta stay clear of that and get Goriona down as quickly as possible and she will eventually fly away. And at this point, everyone will be focusing on Warmaster Blackhorn and he will begin sundering the tanks. Um, so they will need to switch off at whatever stacks they're comfortable with that. Um, um, melee stack up behind him as usual reigns spread out around him and from time to time he'll use disrupting roar which will interrupt all spell casting within a 10 yard radius so you can't stand too close to him on the other hand you can't stand too far away from him either or else you will get caught in the devastate as it's a cone aoe that the radius gets larger the farther it's out so you need to make sure you're not within 10 yards and that you are close enough to him that way you can get out of that cone aoe because as his health gets lower it will hurt very very badly and that is um, due to the vengeance which as he loses every percentage of health he does one percent extra damage as Warmaster Blackhorn's health gets lower and lower, it's going to be more necessary to make sure that you are able to use raid cooldowns, healing cooldowns, um, any DPS that can use any sort of damage reducing cooldowns need to be used as much as possible and most likely after he reaches 50% health, uh, Devastate will be a one shot kill so you've got to make sure that you can stay out of that, that you're near enough to him to be able to get out of that cone um, because it hitting you um, unless you have some sort of cooldown up for damage reduction um, it's most likely going to be a one shot this fight can get pretty hectic and pretty complicated but it's just one of those things where you just can't pay attention to what everyone else is doing make sure you're staying in your barrage just make sure you're getting to the onslaughts make sure that you are not too close if you're spell caster not too far away that you're going to get caught in the cone aoe in phase two and you know stick to these things and you should be pretty golden